Hello everybody, this is Sayyid Hassan Asim and today I'll be talking to you about piezoelectric motors and their applications. So to understand piezoelectric motors, you first need to understand what piezoelectric effect is. In the 1880s when scientists were uh, playing with this piezoelectric crystal, they observed something interesting. This is a piezoelectric crystal and a voltmeter connected to it. When they applied mechanical stress to this piezoelectric crystal, they observed a voltage reading, as you can see in this voltmeter. Now this is what piezoelectric effect is, but why did that happen? For that you need to understand what an electric dipole is. An electric dipole exists within a molecule because of the unequal charge distribution. Now for this video we are going to represent the arrowhead of this arrow as the positive charge and the arrow, the tail of this arrow as the negative charge. This arrow basically for this video represents uh, the electric dipole. Now when you have a lot of these dipoles pointing in one direction, you have what we call, what scientists call an electric domain. Now usually in a piezoelectric crystal, you have many of these electric domains misaligned. When you apply force to these, when you apply force to this piezoelectric crystal, what happens is that these electric domains align in the same direction. Now, this results in an unequal charge distribution on both sides of the crystal. There's an axis of electrons on one side and there's a deficiency, as you can see, on the other side. This results in the production of voltage. So this is what piezoelectric effect is. However, our machines, piezoelectric motors, operate on reverse piezoelectric uh, effect. For reverse piezoelectric effect, what scientists did was that they applied voltage to the piezoelectric crystal. And on applying voltage, so this piezoelectric crystal has all the electric domains aligned in the same direction. So, when you apply voltage to them, all of these electric domains misalign and mechanical stress is produced. This is known as reverse piezoelectric effect and this is the effect used by this mechanical stress that is produced is used by piezoelectric motors to function. Moving on, let's look at the construction of piezoelectric motors. So the construction is pretty similar to our conventional electromagnetic motors. You have the rotor and piezoelectric, uh, you have got the stator and uh, the top axis is just the shaft and the bottom axis facilitates the movement of the top axis. So the only difference lies in the structure of uh, the stator uh, because it contains the piezoceramic. Now piezoceramic is just a piezoelectric crystal which experiences the piezoelectric reverse piezoelectric effect it contracts and expands when you apply voltage to it and that leads to the rotation of the bottom axis which in turn makes our upper axis rotate which is basically the shaft and you have the torque that you need in a motor. Moving on, let's look at the classification of piezoelectric motors. So first you have either rotary or linear piezoelectric motors based on the type of motion. Those are further divided into uh, quasi-static piezoelectric motors or ultra and ultrasonic ultrasonic piezoelectric motors based on the frequency range. Quasi-static uh, piezoelectric motors are further divided into stepping and inertia motors and ultrasonic motors are divided into traveling waves or standing waves ultrasonic piezoelectric motors. Stepping and inertia motors are differentiated based on the driving methods whereas traveling and standing waves ultrasonic mo motors are differentiated based on the wave propagation method. Stepping uh, motors can be further uh, classified into inch form and walking motors and inertia motors uh, can be further classified into stick slip motors based on the operation principle. Now let's, before uh, jumping uh, to the applications of piezoelectric motors, first let's look at how they compare to our conventional electromagnetic motors. So when you talk about the resolution power 
piezo electric motors uh, have are a, ha have a thousand times stronger resolution power than electromagnetic motors the response time is a hundred times better and they are also able to provide a ten times stronger torque and it comes to design you have a lot of flexibility in designing a piezo electric motors you can uh, based on the application you can get piezo electric motors in different shapes and sizes and they're also very uh, uh, their costs are also much lower than your conventional electromagnetic motors and comes to the energy requirements piezo electric motors are very energy efficient meaning they have much lower energy requirements as compared to electromagnetic motors. Now let's look at this graph that compares a piezoelectric device to an electromagnetic device, compares the efficiency of a piezoelectric device to the efficiency of an electromagnetic device. As you can see in this graph, electro, even though electromagnetic devices can achieve a 90% efficiency and piezoelectric devices cannot, can only achieve up to a 40% efficiency Based on the input power, uh, the input power supplied to piezoelectric motors hardly affects their efficiency. So even at uh, even when they're supplied at 30 milliwatts power supply, they're able to perform as well as when they're nearly about as well as when they're supplied only when they're supplied at 30 kilowatts in input power. Whereas electromagnetic devices efficiency um, is very low when they're operating on low powers, as you can see. Moving on, now let's look at the applications of these electric motors. Uh, the first is automated pipetting. So you s what you see in front of you is um, a well plate, which consists of about uh, 1536 small pores. Now you need to um, pour in uh, nanoliters, microliters of liquid right into these pores. When you, when uh, these kind of tasks are carried out manually in labs, accidents occur and um, at times this could also lead to injuries. So to carry out this task you need a lot of precision and accuracy which uh, can only be done with the help of piezoelectric motors because they have such amazing resolution powers. Moving on, cameras, the three models that you see I have all been designed by Canon. Now Canon was the first company to use ultrasonic motors for uh, zooming in and auto lensing and auto focusing um, uh, processes and uh, after that ultrasonic motors are widely now used for these uh, function for these processes and uh, as you can see these USM ac ac these acronyms USM represent ultrasonic motors which are basically our piezoelectric ultrasonic motors so they are now widely used for auto lensing and and zooming in and auto focusing purposes so last uh, uh, application that we're going to go through is uh, in the particle accelerators so you can what you see is a cyclotron and uh, it's a particle accelerator what it mainly does is that it helps to keep a particle on a particular trajectory now there are a lot of labelings what we need what is relevant to uh, this video is the internal comp are the internal components of the cyclotron you need to adjust the position of these internal components so that you can uh, make sure that the particle moves uh, on the trajectory that you want it to move and for that you need to adjust the position of these internal components now if you're going to use electromagnetic motors for this for this purpose what's going to happen is that the magnetic field that's used by electromagnetic mo uh, motors to function is going to interfere with the trajectory of the particle that you're dealing with. So you need motors that do not um, function on um, based on, uh, that do not function whose operation principle does not involve magnetic uh, magnetic fields and piezoelectric motors are just the right kind of motors that we need for this uh, for this uh, for for, for a cyclotron 
as they do not involve magnetic fields and they work on they operate on the principle of piezoelectric reverse piezoelectric effect mm, thank you and thanks for listening